Hi, Father John Wachowski here again with another exciting episode of The Shepherd's Voice. Uh, I want to talk a little bit today about uh, receiving communion. Uh, you know, um, for the last few months, uh, we have not uh, been able to receive communion at all until recently. And uh, even then, there's a different way of receiving. We have to receive after Mass is over, although we are just, we are now changing that. The bishop has given us permission to return to the distributing communion at the regular uh, point in Mass. So, but I do want to talk about uh, receiving communion uh, properly. The uh, clergy team here, the, uh, the priests and deacons who serve you, and also some of our extraordinary ministers have observed um, that some people are not receiving communion uh, uh, properly, and uh, we're, we're pretty sure that it's not out of a, um, uh, uh, an attitude of disrespect, it's just uh, out of um, a misunderstanding or, or inattention. Some people are not really fully conscious of what they're doing. So I wanted to talk about maybe uh, how to receive communion, just to review that, so that you can check yourself out and see uh, if, if you're doing it okay. And of course, as always, if you have questions, feel free to ask the, the, the priest or deacon or, or extraordinary minister. Uh, the hosts uh, that uh, you receive are, um, the, this is the, the people's host here. Um, this is, a, 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 this is a one and a quarter inch host. Uh, and um, they come to us in, in bulk. They come to us in, in big packages like this. And um, because we, uh, under normal circumstances, under our normal uh, mass schedule, we go through thousands of these a week. I need to be very clear, the hosts that I'm handling here are not consecrated, okay? I just, they just came as they do uh, in our shipment that comes in frequently. So these are not consecrated. Um, there are two sizes of priest hosts. We have um, this, uh, this size here, which is uh, like two and three quarter inches, I think. And I don't know if you can see it or not. They all have nice little, um, no, you can't, I guess. They have nice little um, uh, uh, impressions on them. This is a Paschal lamb, which is very nice. Uh, but I, I generally use this kind of host for a daily mass or a funeral or a wedding. Um, and of course, whatever host the priest uses is up to his own discretion. Um, uh, I, for Sunday Masses, I like to use a much larger host. This is a six inch host. And uh, the reason I prefer this is because I like the sign value of the larger host, especially in some of our churches that are much bigger, um, it, you need to have something that is very visible. So this is the host that I like to use for Sunday Mass. Uh, so, somebody said to me recently, um, how, how do you get those hosts to break so neatly? Well, it, there's no trick to it. If you look closely, maybe you can't see it. They're scored. Uh, so that they break very neatly in a certain way. And again, it's not consecrated. Um, but um, this particular host breaks into 24 individual pieces. And those pieces are different. Let me show you here how they come out. Some of the pieces you will see are triangles, like this. And some of them are squarish, I would say. Um, and I tell you this because occasionally somebody who's not familiar with this big host and, and it, how it breaks, sometimes they receive a triangular host and I see them look at it rather quizzically because they're expecting to see, of course, uh, the round host. So, um, so those are the, uh, the hosts that we receive and, and uh, to receive it properly, I think just all it takes is just a little bit of thought, a little bit of careful thought and prayer about exactly uh, what it is that you're doing. Um, how you receive communion, there are two, two ways. You can either receive in the hand or on your tongue. And that choice is up to you. These days, I have been suggesting my personal preference, which is to receive in the hand, only because it's a little more sanitary. But we cannot mandate how you receive. That choice is up to you. If you receive communion in the hand, you, and please note that you use both hands, okay? And, and the hands are placed one on top of the other, okay? See my big hand in the camera there. Um, so, um, the, and it should be your dominant hand should be on the bottom. I'm right-handed, so my right hand is on the bottom. And the palm should be open and flat so that there is a place for the host to be safely placed, okay? Now, there are some things to avoid. Do not, do not, no, never grab for the host because that's unacceptable. And, and don't, even, don't even expect the host to be placed in your fingers. Some, some people will do that and they'll curl their hand around. 
the idea is for us to have as little contact as possible. There should be no physical contact between the minister and the person receiving communion. The, your hand should be parallel to the floor, okay? And open, please do not, some people will cup their hand so that we have a hard time getting the host in there. So please try not to do that. Try to keep the palm open and, and it needs to be flat because if it isn't, it's amazing how often people will come to communion with their hand tilted like this and of course, what happens? So, uh, and then they're surprised when the host uh, falls to the floor. So, um, try to avoid that. And, uh, and, and, and some people will put their hands in, to, in a V like this. That's inappropriate too, because of course, when you do that, then what happens when you try to receive the host? It falls. So again, it's not consecrated, okay? Keep that in mind. Um, do not receive communion one-handed. And by that, I mean some people will receive in their hand and then they will use that hand to receive from their mouth. Um, not only does that look bad, um, but it also invites uh, risk uh, as to dropping the host. Never come to communion wearing gloves. Never come to communion wearing gloves. You must take them off. If you have a medical condition and have to wear gloves, then you will need to receive communion, in that case, on the tongue. If you receive communion on the tongue, pl please note the position of your mouth. Um, and, and, and I tell people, practice, look in the mirror as though you're going to communion to see what it looks like. But sometimes people come to communion like this. Now, we, we don't know where to put the Eucharist when you, when you do it that way. Um, the mouth should be open and the tongue should be out. Those two things, mouth open, tongue out. So, like that. Sometimes people will come to communion with their mouth open but no tongue, like this. So when that happens, we sometimes have to place our fingers into your mouth, which we don't want to do. That's not only unsanitary, especially these days, <clears throat> but it is also uncomfortable. So again, your tongue, just like if you're receiving in the hand, it should be parallel to the floor. Your tongue should be parallel to the floor. Please don't curve your tongue down uh, because again, that is risky. Don't, please don't use your teeth to receive. You can chew the host afterwards because it is spiritual and physical food. It is nourishing. So there's nothing wrong with chewing. That's also a good sign value. But please don't use your teeth to receive because some people put their tongue on their teeth. And I've been, honestly, have been bitten a number of times. Most of us have. So please try to avoid that. And don't move forward when you're receiving because that invites collision and uh, <clears throat> that can be dangerous as well. So please just stand still and let the minister do the job of administering the sacrament to you. I tell people, look in the mirror. Pretend you're going to communion. Look in your mirror and see what you look like so that you can know whether or not you're doing this properly and if the minister can, uh, uh, can give you the Eucharist in the proper way. The bottom line in all this is reverence. That's the whole idea. No matter which way you receive, in the hand or on your tongue, there, it must be done in a spirit of reverence. And there should, in fact, be a slight bow or some sign of reverence right before you receive. <clears throat> After you receive the Eucharist, <clears throat> pardon me, please take time to give thanks. It's what the word Eucharist means. It's the Greek word Eucharistine, which means to give thanks. So please keep that in mind. There should be some period of thanksgiving afterwards. It is inappropriate especially now that we're returning to receiving communion within the Mass, it is in a, inappropriate to receive the, the Eucharist and then run right out the door. <clears throat> it is also inappropriate to receive the Eucharist and to talk to people on the way back to your pew or to carry on a conversation because there should be just that special private time between you and the Lord. The Eucharist is, the Church tells us, the source and summit of our faith. So we have uh, an obligation, and in fact, it should be a desire to receive the Eucharist as often as we can and to do it with reverence and respect and gratitude. It is the true body and blood of Christ. This is the official teaching of the church. It is not a symbol. It is not a representation. It is the real thing. It is a basic teaching of the church. And some of you have heard me say this before. If we had a complete knowledge, if we had total understanding of exactly what it is we are receiving, we would crawl down the aisle 
on our knees and hands. So I would like you to think that over and I would like you to pray over it too, please. That's all for now. Um, I'll be away the next couple of weeks, so um, with Shepherd's Voice, we'll be back until probably early August. But um, thanks for listening, and on we merrily go.